Howdy. We're back. Another episode of the Crawl USA podcast. Uh, man, today we have a topic. Look, I want to know who's saying this. Who is saying this? What do you say to the folks who say you don't need tons and big tires to wheel? I've heard it. I mean, I, I guess I've seen the videos. Those flat fenders. Ugh. Well, who hasn't run into that old codger? You know, when you're, you're getting off a hard trail and you're telling them about it. You're, oh, yeah, we used to run that. In 31s and open diffs. You know, and it's like some eight or nine rated monster trail. Is it like this one. I think that was a different time. Different water went through it. Yeah, I don't know. But, um, yeah. Um, you know, I have a lot of respect for the, the folks that are running um, small axles, small tires, manual transmission, no hydro assist, right? The purists. And, um, you know, we know some that are excellent drivers like they get through some amazing how they do crazy it. stuff right i mean you wheeled with a dana 30 for the first you know few years i knew you yeah yeah i ran with the on, on hard stuff for as long as i could so i guess i am one of those people right but no but you you know you you now have uh one ton axles you you have 40s you have hydro assist, right? All that stuff you allegedly don't need. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's true, you don't, but you're gonna break more stuff. Well, I think if you're doing- You your don't, look, I think the trail is gonna matter, right? Which, what's, what trails you're gonna do, you right? You think. I think if you absolutely, like you just said, want to go up in trail levels I mean look who's saying this it's it's man well I think it's I think it's a few different things right a few different types of people right um, and if, if they're talking about uh, the folks that are you know going to these Jeep group meets and you know, no offense, um, putting ducks on Jeeps and, you know, going camping, running forest trails, overlanding. Yeah, you know, you don't. You don't need that stuff at all. You don't need any of it. Um, you can go out on your, you can do a lot in a stock four-wheel drive vehicle. Yeah. You know, that is, uh, that has, you know, decent clearance from the get-go, right? Um, in fact, I mean, what are they putting on stock Wranglers in this year? 35s, right? I mean, aren't you still putting 33s on those things? No, I think they're 35s and surely not 37s, but 35s probably for sure stock. Yeah. Right, and they're making the axles stronger. The, the Dana 44s that are coming in uh, Jeep Wranglers are, are beefier. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, if you want to, if you want to go do stuff like this, this is, uh, Jason coming through the gatekeeper on Godzilla. Um, and we've, you know, we've had groups, we've, we've, uh, led trails for events where people are out there with, with new stock rigs and man, you see those, those tie rods bending and you know it's there's there's a reason right and if you're going to do harder stuff extreme stuff then you you need to be built for it um in order to not struggle or have the balance of skill and discretion right so um our friends that i'm thinking about that um you know they do uh, run without hydro assist and you know they're, they're running bigger tires and stuff but they're still 
Uh, they're, they're really skilled drivers and um, they also know when to say when, right? They don't get out on stuff that is going to be too much. Right. And they don't run stickies, right? So Right. And that's another thing, right? That's, that adds a, a factor where you're... Um, your components need to be stronger. Right. right? Yeah. Uh, and if you're running really tall gears and sticky tires and your vehicle weighs a ton, not literally, literally but figuratively, right? A heavy, heavy vehicle. Then, yeah, that strength is, you can obviously do it without it. I mean, I ran 39 reds on Dana 44s. I ran 37s on the Dana 30. Right, and it can be done, but um, once in a while, something's gonna break. Not once in a while, it adds up pretty quickly, you know, and I think, look, that's probably a generality. Um, you don't need tons. Uh, you know, and you, depending on what you wanna do, you probably don't, but there's there comes a, a breakover point. <laughs> um, when, if you're going to continue to do it and will with a group, it's very taxing on the group, I think. Yeah, I mean, right? I, I had a, a bad experience like that, right? I, I broke a, a 1310 uh, custom drive shaft and a chromoly axle shaft on the same obstacle and ruined everybody's day. Yeah, um, you know, and that was a unique situation, not... I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I think you just got wedged in on the wrong line that that happened because we've done that one before uh, on, you know, Dana 44s. I've done it on a Dana 30, um, you know, and, and I think things will happen. Um, but, you know, I think it's it's more than just getting in a bad spot and happening once in a while, right? This, this, this terrain just gets harder. And I know people have done this, I believe, on Dana 44s. Uh, I think... Um, you know, but uh, man, just saying that you don't need tons and big tires. Uh, I mean, those flat fenders prove it. But again, what have we seen those flat fenders on? Nothing like this. Yeah, like Moab, San Hollow, right? And even that scares me without a roll cage. I mean, luckily they bounce right out of those things and keep running and don't get crushed. But man, that is scary. Yeah, and, you know, if if your vehicle weight is is low, right? I mean. It's all relative. It only crushes you a little? No, I'm just saying that, you know, um, you're less likely to break a small axle. That was a small part, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, with a, with a really light rig, um, if your rig's really heavy. Is there any correlation uh, to people that say that and that don't carry any tools or recovery or anything? <coughs> in some cases, probably, yeah. And I think in, in a lot of cases, it's just, you know, where they wheel, what they do. And I think in a few cases, it's, you know, I, I can't justify doing that, right? I either, whatever, I can't afford it or, you know, so I'm going to, I'm going to put it down because it's not what I do, right? It's like we've had this conversation before, right? You run one brand of drive shaft, I run another. Yes. And so I say mine's the best, you say yours is the Mine best. Mine is the best. Yeah, see? So whatever you're doing is, is the right thing if you've got, uh, you know, ego involved, right? Um, so, so I'm keeping my angry eyes grilled. It's great because it looks cool as shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think. <laughs> no offense if you're running one of those things to each their own. Look, I'm going to offend some oh, people yeah. probably with this. You know, I, I believe there's one type of Jeep that is thrilled to not do bigger axles. Or they'd like to run bigger tires on it too, though. And they are constantly braking with us. Oh, the XJ. The XJ crowd. Look, we love you guys. We get it. Um, you know, and look, a little bit of that's a joke, but we get it. Like, a big thing of it is price, right? That's the biggest hurdle to any of this. Yeah, I mean, right, thousands and thousands yeah, of dollars. Yeah, rock crawling is, 
I don't know if you could have a more expensive hobby. Yeah, I would. You know, I would. I would venture to maybe. say that it might be cheaper to own a boat than to rock crawl, which is wild, right? There's three things. It's cheaper to rent. Yeah. Right. And none of those is a boat, but if it floats, it flies. Well, and so that's a, you're bringing up a great point, right? Um, so in this uh, scenario, when we we did this is the first time we did this trail, uh, and, and you know, guys that we're out with are all built, right? Because it's more economical in the long run to spend the money to get the bigger parts if you're going to run this kind of stuff because you're you're going to pay in in parts and like you said right downtime well yeah i mean i'm sadly the perfect example right i ran that day in a 30 10 years right and progressively got harder kept breaking it right if I would have replaced it after the first time that I broke, the amount of money saved, just in the parts to rebuild it and the time, right? And we had to learn how to rebuild it. Uh, you know, I destroyed a gear set with it and a locker, mm -hmm. right? And we had to learn, you know, sent the locker back. They were, Ox Locker was kind enough to take that debacle and repair it for me, right? Um, and send it back, but we had to pull it all apart, take out the gear, remove the gears from it, right? The ring from it, put it all back together, right? Learn about that. Um, you know, and that was, that was the last time that we did that, right? Um, and then we went, actually, that was the rear, though. That was the 8.8. Yeah, that was the 8.8. Um, yeah, I guess that's true. But you broke in front, front of quite a bunch on, on, on that Dana 30. Yeah, I front. can't think of when the last time was that Colorado, the first time. I that wasn't the last one. Hmm. The last one was down in Caballo. I think we were on um, we were on Green Canyon. Oh, and uh, and those <laughs> there was oh shit. yeah yeah a lot of, a lot of helpers on that one too. I thought we were going to break your rear too. Yeah, the way things were going, but pulling it sideways. That that happened later. Yeah. So. But yeah, that was the last time I think was was on Green Canyon. Right. So if I would have just and, done and, the and it got to the point where we were carrying spare axle shafts all the time. Yeah. Like that one. Pretty good at replacing them now. Real quick at it. Yeah. Right. Pull the tire off. Pull it apart. Put the new one in. Um, you know, and that's that's great, right? And I think if we were. You know, I think it depends on how much you will, right? If you go out to one of these events and break it once and you go back home and it's not your really typical wheeling, right? Um, you know, if you, man, I'd li I like to say Florida because I think it'd be really cool to take my Jeep out on the beach, right? You wouldn't really need to worry about upgrading as much. You know, go out once a year, break it, replace it, whatever. Um, <clears throat> you know, but for us in this terrain that we like to do, and do it a lot and continually try to get better and get harder trails under us. Um, you know, for us, I think it's really a point where, look, we just can't keep breaking for the money part of it, the time part of it. Um, you know, and the time that we're taking from everybody on the trail helping us repair or get out, right? And, you right. know, I think we're all good sports about it and, you know, we'll help each other out and don't mind it. It's not a thing. But it's still time. Well, there's the money you've laid out too for upcoming stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. If you're wheeling once every couple of months, um, you've got the luxury of time to repair. If you're doing back-to-back -back events and you've already laid out your money for your registration, your lodging, right? You've made plans with people. Um, that money's twisted into them because you may be sharing the lodging, right? right? So and you can't bail on it because that's unfair to them, right? Right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that puts a lot more pressure on it. Um, you know, and I mean, there's been, you know, we went to, what, was it Katemsi? 
broke the first day third obstacle mm -hmm. right and that was you know a 20 hour total drive and I broke the last day on the first obstacle yeah at least it was the last day right um, I didn't wheel for two days yeah you know um, so you know building bigger and stronger lets you to continue your trip right which is definitely a plus because you know, it's still a good time, right? I, you know, still went out with you and did everything and, and you know, filmed and took pictures and stuff. Um, but man, that was a kick in the ass, taking the Jeep and... Yeah, that's a long, long trip. You know, it's like, for us, it's the same distance as going to Sound Hall. Yeah. 10, 11 hours. And... You know, and that's, it's not the first time I broke in Texas. Maybe the third time. Well, one time it was your truck. Your tow pig. Yeah, but I still made it and then broke the Jeep when I got there. Mm. So. So the lesson here, kids, is don't wheel hard stuff. Or don't mess with Texas. I don't know. Um, so do you need tons and uh, big tires to wheel? No. Um... But it, it's situational. And if you're doing hard stuff, it, it helps. And I think in the long run, you get more time wheeling and spend less money. And that helps wear and tear, right? I think, um, you know, when you're using the smaller components and putting this kind of stress and stuff on it, it really wears through them. Um, and to the fact that, you know, if you're not just a hundred percent on your maintenance or know what you're looking for, you go out the next time and then it breaks, but it's probably because of something you did the previous time. And now you have that to deal with versus now. And yeah. And it's not just axle shafts, right? It's, um, your bracketry on your rig, right? Your, um, your, your panhard bar bracket or your um, your sector shaft on your your steering box or the steering box right your pitman arm like all kinds of stuff that you're putting all this extra stress pressure on yeah. stress and um, if you beef it up it's gonna hold up better yeah it takes a lot of that concern and pressure off those things and you know we're still gonna break some probably um but you know there's a lot less chance now right like we're getting into worse situations and something we probably knew we shouldn't have done or something like that and we pushed too hard um i think it's going to be leading more to our breaking now more than you know components failing yeah at this point so just trying to get through uh you know maybe a difficult trail not a severe or extreme trail right so um yeah so if you're throwing that around that's great um uh, glad you don't need them right it's better different wheeling i think would be the best thing but let us know your thoughts yeah let about, us know uh, tons and big tires and hydro assist whether you need them or not and uh, if you do what are the circumstances where they become practical. I think that's what most people who say this, that they don't think it's practical. And I think it's probably impractical for a lot of styles, but I don't think it's impractical at all for what we do. Yeah, I think it's the way. You gotta do it that way. That's it. If not, you just broke down too much. And, and you're not gonna be one of the cool kids, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's about being the cool kids, so. Um, all right. Well, yeah, let us know. You can't get in the eight lug mafia. Ooh, the eight lug mafia is true, right? All right. All right. All right. That's what we got for you guys. See you on the trails. Like, subscribe, comment. We'll see you later.